So welcome to another session of A Course in Miracles workbook lessons. Uh, tonight we do lesson 126. Um, 120, lesson 125 was in quiet, I received God's word today. So an extension of verse 46.10, be still and know I am. And it really is giving us the instruction, the only instruction, the answer to all our questions, which is return to that void within, that void we're so afraid to enter, the void really meaning the heart temple, in silent stillness where the essence of God, which is silent stillness, reveals itself as our self, our true self, our divine holy self, um, as that which is the extension of God. And so when we abide in silent stillness within ourself, we abide in God, and the self realizes itself as the self-same essence as God. And so that leads directly into tonight's lesson, lesson 126. It means the self is sharing itself with itself. The self being the true, your true essence, your soul, your true soul is God's soul. It's the extension of God's soul. So then all that I give is given to myself. Lesson 126. And I almost want to start using words here. But there's really nothing more to say than that if you grasp that. Now, today's idea, which is completely alien to the ego, the filter of fear, sin, and guilt, that's all ego is, is a filter, an erroneous filter preventing us from knowing ourselves truly. So it's completely alien to the ego, which is the thinking mind. Thinking mind is ego. Being without thought is self. So it's completely alien to the ego and the thinking of the world, which is an egoic projection of a dreaming mind. And so completely alien. It's com it's, <laughs> the, the ego cannot grasp this. And so when you start to grasp this, I want you to realize your Holy Spirit grasps it. And that means that if your Holy Spirit grasps it, then there's a part of you that's already dissolving or has completely dissolved. So completely alien to the ego and thinking of the world is crucial. Today's idea is crucial to the thought reversal that this course will bring about. That's the primary purpose of the course, to bring about a new way of knowing, not seeing, knowing, knowing thyself, knowing thyself. If you believed the statement, there would be no problem in complete forgiveness. Because no matter how horrible the words appeared, or no matter how horrible someone's appeared that has seemed to hurt you, you'd be grateful because you realize, I needed that because I made a dream to escape reality. I made a dream because I wanted to be special. And of course, it failed me. And so if I practice forgiveness, I'm only forgiving myself, bringing myself into the realization what my true capital S self is. So there'd be no problem in complete forgiveness. Certainty of goal awakened to self and sure direction inwards to self into the silent storms. You would understand the means by which salvation comes to you, silent storm, and, would, and, and practice forgiveness when you're not being silently still and would not hesitate to use it now. Well, now is the only time you use anything because now is all there is. Now is God. Let us consider what you do believe in place of this idea. It seems to you that other people are apart from you, your friends, animals, people, places, things, and events, and able to behave in ways which have no bearing on your thoughts nor your thoughts on theirs. Therefore, your attitudes have no effect on them and their appeals for help are not in any way related to your own. So think of the question you asked earlier when you say, my friend phoned me and asked me to pray for her or pray for her dog or pray for her child or pray for someone else. Do you realize there's something in you that's requiring the same as opposed to seeing your friend with her kids or her dogs or whatever outside you needing help outside you. It's you that's asking for this. That's why this, I haven't had a friend this week ask me to pray for them or their dogs. If you have, then it's, then it's relevant to your body-mind false perception of self. 
And so what is it calling you to do? It's calling you to be thyself knowingly in which the miracle takes place. So therefore, your attitudes have no effect on them and their, and their appeals for help are not in any way related to your own. Do you see how absurd the dualistic thinking is? You further think, you think, that they can sin without affecting your perception about yourself. If they can sin and you're aware of their sin, you can only be aware of their sin, so-called sin, error, if it's in you, whilst you wouldn't see it. While you can judge their sin and yet remain apart from condemnation and at peace. How can you remain at peace when you condemn it? In the Bible, it says, as a man judges, not a woman, but only men, of course, as a man judges, so you are judged too. But by whom? By God? No, God doesn't judge. So it's by your own perception. So if they're your judgments of whatever you think is out there, it's a judgment you'll then use on yourself to always. So in the erroneous way of, of the ego mind thinking, when you forgive a sin, there's no gain to you directly. That's how the ego thinks. You give charity to one unworthy, merely to point out that you are better than them on a higher plane, spiritual, more spiritual, than he whom you forgive. He has not earned your charitable tolerance, which you bestow on one unworthy of the gift because his sins have lowered him beneath a true equality with you. You're the superior. This is just false forgiveness. That's how false forgiveness of the world works. He has no claim on your forgiveness. It, it, it holds out a gift to him, but hardly to yourself, because you're giving something begrudgingly, and therefore you're losing a part of your identity. Thus is forgiveness basically unsound. Even though we quote the Bible, Christians quote the Bible and then judge the world. And yet Jesus clearly teaches that there's a man, is, you know, I mean, if a man judges, so he's judged by his own judgment. And more importantly, uh, the most vital instruction he gives, he says, I seek mercy, forgiveness, not sacrifice. Thus is forgiveness basically unsound, a charitable whim, benevolent, yet undeserved, our paradoxical, a gift bestowed at times. And at other times, withheld, unmerited, withhold, un, unmerited, withholding, it is just. Nor is it fair that you should suffer when it's withheld. The sin that you forgive is not your own. Of course it is. If you're seeing it, it's in you. And, and not only physiologically and body time, space time matter in you in this current illusionary self, it's truly in you as your misperception of yourself, <laughs> which then isn't true because you don't exist as you. Someone apart from you committed the sin. And if you are then gracious unto him by giving him what he does not deserve, the gift is no more yours than was his sin. And so it stays with you because it becomes a resentful sacrifice of your body-mind identity. So you're better and they're worse and you're now pissed off because they behaved in a certain way that didn't fit in with your judgmental, pre-made-up judgment system. If this be true, which thank God it's not, forgiveness is no grounds on which to rest dependably, dependably and sure. It's an eccentricity in which you sometimes choose to give indulgently an undeserved reprieve. Beautiful. <laughs> That's how we operate. Yet it remains your right to let the sinner not escape the justified repayments for his sin. And man, how do people in relationships hold each other to that for years? Correct. One error looked at the wrong woman at the wrong time and he punishes you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Think you, the Lord of heaven, would allow the world's salvation to depend on this. Would not his care for you be small indeed if your salvation rested on a whim? And God, it's not. And this is true about 99% of the world. You do not understand forgiveness. 
you speak of it in churches and mosques and mental asylums, but you know not what it means. As you see it, it is but a check upon an overt attack without requiring correction in your mind, because you're going to hang on to your judgments with self-righteousness beyond laws itself. It cannot give you peace as you perceive it. That's why forgiveness doesn't give human peace. In actual fact, it creates more resentment and guilt. It is not a means for your release, which is exactly what it is, from what you see in someone other than yourself. It has no power to restore in you your unity with him to your awareness. And that's the whole point of this world of delusions, made in vengeance, is to then realize when Holy Spirit used it for you, is that you then only attract your fractured mirrors that show you what's happening inside you. This is not what God intended it to be. This is not what God gave us the illusionary concept of forgiveness for. It's an illusionary concept of forgiveness, but it's an illusionary concept that gets rid of every other concept and then dissolves in its own, in your own awareness of what you are. Not having given him the gift he asks of you, not having given God the gift of forgiving yourself and or forgiving your dream characters, because you dreaming this up, you're having to forgive yourself for dreaming up an illusion, which is never true. So not having given God the gift he asks for you, you cannot recognize God's gifts and, the, and think God has not given them to you, which he has. He's given you a tool whereby you can awake up. Forgiveness is like that little blue pill, red pill is in, 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 in the matrix, which is the one that wakes you up. I can't remember blue. Let's call it a green pill. It's the green pill that wakes you up immediately beyond the matrix wake up. Okay? You wake up and all the machines just stop because you realize all of it's in your mind. Yet would he ask you for a gift unless it was for you? Everything God asks of you is for you. How beautiful is that? God asks nothing for himself. He asks it so that he can multiply it in you. Could he be satisfied with empty gestures and evaluate such petty gifts as worthy of his son? Salvation is a better gift than this. And true forgiveness which is the realization that there's really nothing to forgive but yourself for dreaming a dream that never happened, as the means by which it is attained, must heal the mind that gives it. Forgiving is receiving. For you give it only to yourself. You forgive yourself for falling asleep and dreaming a dream that never happened. What remains is unreceived, has not been given. But what has been given must have been received because you can only offer what you have. And this is the beautiful delusion of the duality world. If you hadn't taken the world seriously, that it pissed you off enough to warrant forgiveness, you wouldn't have realized you're dreaming. So the cruelty and the intolerable insanity of this planet and this dream state is that it's going to drive you to within an inch of taking your own life in the point of your total and utter frustration and disappointment and disillusionment with what it is and the way it turned out. And you're, you're, you're outraged at the intolerable cruelty and the terrible suffering mankind imposes on each other and the animals of this world. And it's that stuff that grills you, makes you angry, and takes you on a righteous, vengeful journey, righteous, believing that, that it's okay. And it's designed that way because while you're trying to fix it, correct it, change it, or get rid of the evil ones in the world, you keep the world real in your imagination. Therefore, keeping yourself real as a body-mind, therefore staying asleep in the dream, which has never happened. You have to awaken like you wake in the morning and realize this dream I've just had in the middle of the night was not true, no matter how horrific a nightmare it was. And only salvation can wake you up. It's not the red pill, it's not the blue pill, it's the green pill that's filled with light and awakens you to yourself. Today we try and understand the truth that giver, that the giver and the receiver are the same. You give to self. Remember, everyone's a character in your dreaming mind, including your body mind. It's a localization of your dreaming mind from which the dreamer sees himself and then believes itself as real. 
What, how do you serve mankind? How do you end the cruelty and the, and, and the injustices of the world? How do you end the world, the dream? You awaken to self, and thus the dreamer who's localized as you, awake, a part of him wakes to, it wakes to. You will need help to make this meaningful because it is so alien to the thoughts to which you are accustomed. But the help you need is there, right here within you. Give him being your true self, your faith today, your shared being with God. Give him your faith today and ask him, you're asking your true self, that he share your practicing in truth today. And if you only catch a tiny glimpse of the release that lies in the idea we practice for today, just a tiny glimpse, that in itself, makes this day a glory for the world because remember the world's in you. So if you awaken that little bit more, the world awakens that little bit more too in a joyous way. Give 15 minutes twice today. Give it, do it every hour really is what I say to attempt to understand today's idea. It is the thought by which forgiveness takes its proper place in your priorities. Because, man, we like to be spiritual, but it's not a priority. It's just a nice to have that we can talk to at spiritual functions and then go to Africa burn or America burn or whatever burn they want to burn. It's just, oh, I'm spiritual. You're not spiritual. You have spirit awakening to self. The end. No discussion. You're spiritual. What a silly, what a silly notion. It's like saying I'm religious. No. It's, just so, it's just ridiculous. Let's not go there. Any. It is the thought that will release your mind from every bar, from every obstacle to what forgiveness means. What is forgiveness? It's the pathway inwards to awakening to self and let you realize its true worth to you. And here it is. You heard me say this one gazillion times. I exaggerate for effect. And since it's an illusion, exaggerations are loud. In silence, close your eyes upon the world. It does not understand forgiveness and seek sanctuary, sink in, sink into the temple, in the quiet place where thoughts are changed and false beliefs laid by. Because you don't heal yourself. You can't. Your body mind isn't true, so it can't fix itself. What you do is you sink into the temple, the true self, where God abides as his true self. And as you abide in silent stillness and give gratitude for being there, the erroneous thoughts dissolve. You can't forgive yourself. You abide there. And the thinking that you felt was needed in order to punish yourself and hold yourself in guilt dissolves in the awareness of what you are. These false beliefs are laid by. Repeat today's idea and ask so for help in understanding, in the transcendence of understanding of what it really means. Be willing to be taught. Don't be like those religious zealots that come with predetermined ideas and are you going to shoehorn the courses? Don't do that. That's why Christianity is split into 22,000 sects and more because everyone has their predetermined idea of what it should be based on their own self-judgment. Be glad to hear the voice, capital V, of truth and healing, the voice of truth and healing. Speak to you. Now, please take note. Be still. Listen to the inner voice of truth and healing. Now, it's a little bit of a paradox because you don't really need healing. You heal. You're perfect. The real you. But you're unaware of it. So you seem to be sick or whatever. So the voice of truth and healing speak to you. And you will understand. There's a transcendence. The word he speaks. Here we go. And recognize he speaks your words to you, for he is the real you. And it's the real you speaking to the false you in gentle tones of silence until the false you dissolves its identity. And all that remains is the real you eternally as the shared essence, shared being with God. He speaks your words to you. Not Jesus spoke to me. I am speaks through me, for me, as the I am is all that I am. The I am is the extension of God's unconditional being. 
as often as you can, remind yourself, you have a goal today and every other day while you appear to be in body-mind. Remember, this doesn't just dissolve and you become enlightened and it's over. You uh, Enlightenment is simply the recognition of our shared being. And then when you pr practice the abidance in the silent stillness of our shared essence with God, every day becomes lighter, lighter. Enlightenment is enlightening the load, lightening up the load until the, the infinite essence is known as our true essence. The infinite lightness of being is known. Do not let your mind forget this goal for long, but tell yourself, all that I give is given to myself. The help I need to learn this is true is with me now, and I will trust in him who is myself, who is my shared essence with God, who is the kingdom in which I abide in God, in which God abides in me. Amen. Let's stop there and do a couple of questions.